Hey guys, welcome to my studio. On the weekend, I went to catch up with my friend in the park and I saw beautiful, beautiful magnolia trees that were blossoming. So today I will show you how you can sketch these beautiful flowers using pastel paper or sanded paper, soft pastels and soft pastel pencils. You might need some smudge sticks and an eraser. To start with, let's have a look at the flower. They're so beautifully textured. They almost look like they're made out of wax or something like that. You can see the dual color, so one color on the inside and then a different shade on the outside. They're so, so stunning. They almost look like candles on the tree. So what I will do today is I will use some of the photographs and videos that I took on the day to create this gathered composition. You can always follow along or you can work off your own image. So to start with, I will use a brighter pencil because I've actually started with a bit of a sort of a brownie creamy tone, but I don't think you guys can see it at all on the camera. That's the amazing thing between what your eye can capture and what your camera can capture. It's absolutely incredible. So hopefully this will be a little bit better with white. Although if you're at home following along, you can use other colors. You don't need to use something as bright as white for this stage. So I'm going to put in a branch. So we we'll just mark that through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this flower here of mine just on the side here like that. So this would be a flower like that just here and then over here i'm going to put a couple of flower buds i will use photographs that i took for a reference and then another one here so next i'm going to start structuring this over here so what i want to do is so to make things easier you can mark some of the important bits like that and so this would be the branch coming down to it see these would be the little bits there and just so that you can see better and then you can create an overall shape and now that i've got that overall shape of the flower that's going upwards like this i can start putting in petals and things like that place each petal. Now for each petal, if you look closely at the flower, you can see that they're very rounded. Um, so what you can do is you can actually create circles, you know, like, like we did for when we drew cups and things like that. So in a very similar way, if you want to, you can, you can watch a video on that too. But And you see now I can make more sort of a concrete decisions about where those branches are going and so on. So to start, I'm actually going to use these soft pastels and just because they are larger and it's a little bit easier to cover larger areas with them. So for that, I'm actually going to go with a light layer over the outside of the leaves, you know, the darker color. Now, because for this tutorial, I am using a sanded paper. A sanded paper really allows you to build up your layers and really work with your composition, you know, for quite a while before it sort of gives out on you. But you can still use, um, you know, other papers as well. Just remember to apply very thin layers if you want to have, uh, you know, that multi-layered effect. They're such beautiful flowers, they almost look like they were sculpted. Next, I'm just going to use my fingers to smudge. You can use smudge sticks like that as well, uh, but the, the thing is, smudge sticks, they kind of remove some 
of the pastel as well so I usually reserve them to use with very small details you know something that your finger cannot get into but you can I actually have some tutorials where I start to work with smudge sticks early on as well so it really is just a preference or even just how you feel on the day you know it doesn't have to be anything too scholarly now next what I'm going to do is I'm going to very very softly use um, a little bit of grey you see I'm not going for a really strong bright white and the reason for this is that this paper will allow me to build up those layers but there will be some areas where I would want to go darker and some areas where I would like to go lighter so this is just marking that territory kind of blocking the color at this stage I'm not really worried about light and shadow I'm just marking down where I want what so that it's a little bit easier it's a little bit more visible and because it sort of uh, merges in with a bit of green right next to the flowers themselves see I've got a good example here I'm just gonna pop a little bit of the brighter zinnia green so this is the main composition marked through now what I'm gonna start doing next is I'm gonna be using my pastels both this and this to create even more detail so almost like the next uh, level and but before that I want to work a little bit on the background now, I don't want to change the background color too much but I do want to you know add a little bit of that softer sort of a shade variations and I'm gonna add a little bit of green because there are lots of greenery and you saw in the videos how just how beautiful it all was so I'm just gonna add some here and there Are you enjoying this video? Are you hearing some really important information? Well, in that case, check out my Patreon page. We're just starting from $2 a month, you can support this channel. And from $8 a month, you will be able to unlock a whole level of extra videos that are regularly uploaded onto my Patreon page. So make sure to go over there and check it out lots of in-depth tutorials and follow along things including things like voting for next video to come and so on we're having lots of fun on patreon so don't forget to go and check it out now you can always make a decision and to create a lot of detail on these leaves now i probably will not at least not on all of them because uh the blurrier things look the more sort of out of focus they look the more uh, they are pushed onto the background and I kind of like that effect as well just randomly in different places and we can work more on that, you know, but later on. I'm going to focus a little bit more on our little branch here. So to do that, I'm just going to move this a bit closer. And I'm going to start working on the shadows of the actual branch. Now using a pencil really helps to get into a lot of detail. You know, just because you can have such a nice little point and also you can sharpen it quite well as well and then I'm going to use a bit of ochre now that's for the highlight that shows the branch itself and now a little bit of blue, light blue and that is to show the highlight with, where you can actually see the sky reflecting off the shiny parts of the branch Next, adding a little bit more green to create a bit more of the merger between the green parts of the branches, you know, where they sort of come closer to the flowers, and the 
branches, you know, the brown parts of the branches themselves. Now I'm going to use white, but this white is very, very soft. It's not very strong white, so I like to use this before I go into the strong highlights, if I need to. Sometimes you don't need to go into the very strong highlights. So here we've got some textures and things that we might like to bring out. You know, the little fluff on these branches. Now, normally I would work on things at a very similar rate, so they'd be more done on the flowers, but just because these are such different colors and I don't want to have a lot of sort of a smudging across, I like to focus on one area and then the other. Okay, so next I'm going to start working on the actual um, flowers themselves and the petals. Okay, so to start off with some of the highlights, I'm just going to add a little bit more of the warmer through and because now I already have that color the base color through so now I can focus a little bit more on the variations of that those shades and also you know some shadows highlights and texture that you can see as well Also now paying more attention to little shape changes. You see like this little leaf here sort of has that little bump there. So now is the time to put that in. Now softly just going to go through and integrate this color into the previous layer. Okay, next I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna start working on the lighter color which is visible on the inside of the flower and you see all the patterns and things like that. So these are the things I'm gonna start looking at. Okay, so to start with I'm gonna use a little bit of white. Now I'm gonna use it very, very softly because I don't want to create really strong highlights before it is time to go on for the very strong highlights. So just a little bit of that soft sort of a hazy lighter shade and I'm also going to put through some of the textures as well so that's why it's so great that I have this flower here so I can actually see the direction of the lines and so on so I'm gonna mark them through with my gray pencil Okay, so now again I will soften them, but I'm not smudging them completely in, I'm just softening them like that by just dabbing slightly. Next I'm going to go for this uh, sort of a yellowy, creamy, kind of a, whatever it's called, no creamy, white. And I'm going to almost block but not quite. I'm also creating a little bit of texture here. And now I think it's a good time to start using these smudge sticks. You can see how different this is from using a finger. See, it removes quite a bit of pastel. But it can be useful in some situations when you actually want that soft color. Okay, so, so far we've got a little bit of the darker shade happening closer in because there's a bit of a shadow falling through and now I would need to really bring more light to the outside areas. And next, of course, going for the white. But before I do that, see if we look quite closely at the flower we can see that it's getting a little bit more pink on the outside edges so i'm going to put some of that purpley pinky color through first with a, a little bit of a pencil and 
and then add a little bit of that same pink that we were using on for the outside of the petals as well just like that very soft and again give it a little bit of a smudge gonna go in with the white and I'm not gonna go all the way and I'm going to focus sort of on the outside parts the parts that catch the most light and I'm not going to smudge these ones in also quite a strong little line on the outside of the petal like that that is white it's quite interesting because on the inside here let's have a look see on the inside it's got a bit of a pink line going through but on the outside it's got a bit of a white uh, edge going through so you can put that in I'm going to work on the next petal so a very similar thing first giving a bit of a smudge to soften up the color then adding few lines texture lines this but I'm actually going to go over it with a bright white as well now this one is also quite bright so I'm just gonna go and straight in with white strong white straight away okay so now I'm gonna do a very similar thing on these other ones as well but they are not in so much light so I'm just gonna go very very lightly with this duller white and I'm gonna really really buffer in there and remove quite a bit of it just to you know create that darker effect I'm still gonna go in with this gray and add more textures now this one same we've got quite a bit of sort of shadow but again I will give it a good smudge on these petals though we do have that you know stronger white line on the outside so I'm just gonna put that in it's almost like a little big here okay next I'm gonna go in for um, a sort of a more um, purpley more magenta pink and I'm just gonna put just deposit a little bit of that color through so next I'm going to start working in detail on the buds and the petals as well the outside of the petals now I have some of this color just I'm going to add a little bit of blue in as well on those areas of highlight
Okay, now similar thing on this one here as well. I'm going to leave this for now. We'll come back to that with some stronger highlights and some more shadows but I want to work a little bit on this flower as well otherwise they might just end up looking too separate if we completely finish this without working on this so just like I did there I'm gonna go over and have a look at some highlights Okay, now same with the blue, just a little bit of those sort of bluey highlights, especially on the top part, you know, where the sky gets to play a bit of a part in coloration. And next, of course, going in with that sort of a browny reddish shadow color. So next, I'm gonna bring just a little bit more pink inside the flower. Here, even though they're white, it's still a little bit more pinkish. So just a tiny little bit to merge these together. I'm gonna do that by just picking up a little bit of pink and just dabbing it back into here. Just like this, because we don't want too much of it. But we might want just a little bit. You can even do this. Some areas might require more, some a little bit less. That depends on, you know, what how you've been layering things up, up until now. Okay, and now I'm going to go for some stronger highlights on the, you know, the pink side of this flower. This is when you can really bring in the texture, bring in some of the brighter highlights and to show overall sort of a three-dimensional form as well, shape, to make it stand out more if you want to achieve that result, of course. Any kind of details that you want to add now, now you can really start getting into little things like that. and make them really stand up and stand out. Next, again, strong highlights, but this time just, you know, those really, really bright ones that you really want to bring out. And now I'm working both on the inside and the outside of the flower as well. Now, some of these highlights might be highlights that are created by the light hitting these sort of edges and some can be just natural patterns of the flower coloration. Next thing I want to do is I want to bring in more shadows. Now for this I'm actually going to use this really dark blue um, shade so this would be more, I don't know, it doesn't have the names here but maybe more like Prussian blue, you know one of those really dark almost black like blues and I'm gonna put just a little bit of that shade through on the branches and also 
on some of these areas as well just to create quite a bit of contrast because you see so far we've been using a lot of reds for shadows which makes it very floral you know it creates that very sort of a deep red shade but some areas we want to just really really deepen it and of course going with the opposite color or color that's you know say this was warm and so now I'm using a cool shade can really make it stand out quite a bit now I you have to be careful also, especially when you're working on flowers, to not overuse really dark shadows. Now, it's okay to do it with a flower like this because it's so firm, it's very sort of a wax almost like. But if you are working with really soft flowers, like really soft petals, you know, like peonies or something like this, you have to be very careful when using really strong shadows because it can create a very artificial and quite a bit there as well that one's quite a dark sort of a shadow there now I really don't want to smudge this dark color because I don't want to make my flower look blue but I do maybe in some areas or to just dab a little bit to soften that just that slightly a little bit I'm gonna do a similar thing on these petals um, how about as well especially in the areas where it requires a dark strong shadow Okay, so now I'm going to go back into the green again and just work this a little bit more because now we've got the flower here so to finish these things up a little bit and remember how I said in the beginning that I wasn't sure if I want to do um, really you know detailed leaves or anything like this I think I might just get a little bit more detail into this leaf here and maybe just a little bit here and the rest I'm going to smudge even further out of um, focus just get a little bit more definition of the shape first so we're coming from behind I can't see exactly where it's joining And a little bit of yellow. But at this stage I am smudging it and I'm working it into the paper. I'll go for this shade just a little bit. You see, whenever you're working on anything, even if it seems just one color, like it seems green or blue or, you know, whatever it is, remember that there are so many different shades that are present and by not putting those shades and just by using one shade of green or, you know, whatever color you're using, you're really limiting uh, the beauty of your composition. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of gray. And I'm even gonna grab a really bright yellow and I can see that on one of them the light almost comes through in one of those veins up on the top there so and a darker I know this might seem strange but I'm gonna go back in for that red color that we used with the flowers to tie up the whole composition I'm gonna put a bit of that sort of a red shadow through and 
and of course with the green it's gonna look much more brownier than the red and on this one too And now, of course, I'm going in for that dark blue to create a very rich, very colorful shadow. Okay, now I just want to add a couple of final highlights on here. Now I'm also going to add just a little bit of the blue, you know, again that part where the sky is reflecting. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur out some of these light areas and then see if we need to do any more tweaking or anything like this. you know some of the last steps before uh, I say that this is finished is to just go over some of the uh, sort of edges and just add a bit more shadows or a bit more highlights if it needs you know if I need to to do that so now we've got just a little bit more shadow there and you see now I can work with the line as well and add sort of a it's really free but contrasting line. I can also work with the dark red. And this is again just a really good way to remember that you know that you know you can take photographs and you can look at them but nothing really beats having a beautiful flower um, that you can look at and study and see all the little bits and pieces so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial I hope you um, followed along and um, let me know in the comments what else you would like me to do for you next I would also like to take this chance to say a big big thank you to my wonderful wonderful patrons who are supporting this channel, they're supporting me making more videos for you guys and also they get a chance to see all the extra videos that are not posted here on YouTube. So if you are interested don't forget to go and check that out, otherwise I hope you guys have a lovely lovely day. and. As always, thank you so much for drawing with me.